three videos left. Video 50 is going to be a fun look back at the series. For the next two videos, I'm going to cram in some of the many ideas that didn't get a video all to themselves. And I'll add a few little extra bits in as well. I'm more than happy to go into greater detail in the comments section, so do please ask for that if you feel any of the segments don't go in-depth enough. Let's begin. No, 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 this is no good, no good. Come on, we've got to step this up, yeah? Explosive, really hit that ball as hard as you possibly can. Come on. Better, better. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. If you're trying to improve, you've got to learn to love mistakes. You just can't expect to do something at a higher level straight away. It, it's going to take many, many failed attempts before the progress is made. If you're not prepared to go out of your comfort zone, then you're just not going to improve very quickly. Now, if I've got a kid who's trying to work on a stronger second serve, for example, and he comes back from a tournament proudly announcing that he only hit two double faults all day, I'm going to be disappointed because I'm going to know that he's just wasted a great opportunity to get better. Welcome to the National Tennis Centre here in Roehampton, where I'm with my good friend Paul once again. Now, the smash in tennis is often overcomplicated, and it doesn't need to be. You know how to serve, right? Well, the only real difference is that the ball toss is coming from your opponent's racket instead of out of your hand. You do have to move quickly and effectively to get your positioning, whilst at the same time setting up part two of your serve. And really make sure you're watching that ball closely and just let part two of the serve take over when you play those smashes. Every serious junior tennis program must have a match play program that gives their players the opportunity to play real matches at the weekends. Firstly, it gives the coach an easy opportunity to watch their players competing. Any coach of a tournament level player who doesn't ensure they regularly watch their player compete simply can't have any real desire to help that player. That's because only by watching a player in a real match can a coach properly assess their progress. Secondly, it's great for the kids to enjoy playing tennis and put into practice what they've learnt in their lessons. Especially the kids who maybe are less serious about their tennis, want to compete, but don't necessarily want to enter an official tournament. Our match play programme runs all year round, roughly 70 to 80 events per year. It's run from my, web, it's run from my website with end of year prizes sponsored by Richmond Sheen Sports. It attracts mainly our own juniors, but it's open to everyone. And finally, Tristan recently broke the record for consecutive match play wins by getting 60 in a row in green ball. Here's what he put it down to. It's all about um, not giving up and when, even if you're down, um, always keep going. And towards an end of the match, if you're winning, um, always try to keep the ball in. So don't try to go wild. So... Do I have to hold the racket exactly in this position for this particular shot? No. Tennis is complicated enough without overcomplicating things that don't need to be complicated. Federer and Nadal were both asked recently at the ATP Tour Finals at the end of 2015 what grip they used for their forehand. Neither of them had a clue nor any desire to find out. I'll only change a player's grip if it's restricting them from getting the full potential from a particular shot. Otherwise, all that's important is that the grip is comfortable to them and they're able to stay loose and relaxed while using it. Federer and Djokovic both have very different forehand grips, yet both can hit with phenomenal power and topspin. 
Like the Smash, the drive volley doesn't have to be overcomplicated. The skill is the same as on your forehand drive and your backhand drive. Any increase in the difficulty due to the ball not bouncing before you hit it can be compensated by moving quickly and effectively into position and giving yourself enough room to be able to hit the ball early. And of course, you're only going to consider using the drive volley on easier, slower, higher balls. And of course, don't forget to really make sure you look at that ball clearly. So, here I am in uh, Buenos Aires this time with my good friend Nick, who uh, you'll remember from the Rio videos. And uh, this first little one, RSB, Racket Split Ball. So what I'm going to ask Nick to do is to keep his eyes on my racket when I'm about to play the shot. So he's going to see when my racket dips down, starts to forward swing, and he's going to time his split step based on what he sees on the racket to try and get a perfectly timed split step. And as soon as he started a split step, he's going to transfer his eyes to the ball. So uh, his eyes should be on the ball before I make contact. And if he gets all that stuff right, hopefully he's going to feel that he's got a little bit more time on the next shot. You up for it? Absolutely. How was that? Well, that was great. I felt my split steps were timed better and I had a bit more time to prepare. So, nice. all good. Coaches, want your players to experience the ups and downs, highs and lows of a five set match, but only got half an hour to do it? Then do the short version, where every game is decided by one point. If the score gets to six all, then whoever's meant to serve the next point serves it, and that decides the tie break and the set. Players alternate, alternate their serving just the same way they do in a normal match, but they make sure they never serve from the same side twice in a row. And if the score gets to six all in the fifth set, then play two clear, just like they do in most of those grand slams. I just won my match. Oh yes, what was the score? Seven six two six three six six four nine seven. Nice. Thank you. Verdasco won 22 points more than Becker, but check out the final result. It's clear that Becker won the points that mattered the most. Players must understand which points in the match are more important than others and play calculated clever tennis on those points. It's always great to be 15 love up, so the first point of every game is big, and of course those close games, 30 all, deuce, game points, break points, and pretty much every point towards the end of a tight set, especially in a tie break where every single point counts, literally. Always show your opponent that you're prepared to dig in and fight hard for those important points. Okay, Nick, and the second one is BSS. That's uh, bounce, spin, still. So bounce is you watching the bounce before you're about to hit the ball, really being clear, not letting that ball get too blurry, and then picking up a clear sight of the ball to the extent you can see the spin on the ball after the bounce, normally top spin, uh, and then that leads to head still on your hit. Yeah, just like Federer hits through the ball, he keeps his head on that moment of con on contact. That's what I do on every shot. <laughs> So how is that BSS, Nick? Well, it definitely um, helped me get more focused and see the ball a lot clearer. Good. Very good. Warming up before playing should be dynamic, so lots of movement and a load of shadow strokes is a must. Stretches are great too, but they have the best effect when the body is warm, so a good time to do them is at the end of a session. Doing a daily exercise routine will also do wonders for keeping your body strong and flexible for the physical challenge of playing regular sports. I myself do a 25 minute routine every single day just for that purpose and to also reduce the risk of picking up injuries. 
This gets a bit deep, but everyone needs a bit of perspective from time to time, especially tennis players. Many ways to get it, but this is the one I like the best, so relax, concentrate, and let's begin. So tennis players, next time you're getting stressed before, during or after a tennis match, remember, it's just two people hitting a yellow ball around somewhere on a tiny piece of rock that's moving through space, which itself is so vast it's almost impossible to comprehend. Is your tennis match really that important? And if it is so important to you, wouldn't you play better anyway if you were just able to be more relaxed about it all? I reckon Serena Williams, if she'd been able to put into perspective her attempt to win the calendar Grand Slam last year, she might just have done it, instead of falling short when the pressure all got a bit too much in that tension-filled semi-final at the US Open. Just a thought. I look forward to seeing you next time.